So we're here in a big blue stem field at Hamilton's and boy, wouldn't this make some gray hay. Which brings us to a topic of our video today is hay, fertilizer, should I fertilize my native warm season grass? Well, there's a lot of information out there, but we kind of had to figure it out for ourselves. So we did some experiments we'd be excited to show you. Um, so come along, we'll see what we see what we did. First, we're gonna start with the boring science part. Colt's the exciting one in the story. He's gonna show us what's out here in the field, but I'm gonna do the boring science part. So off with the boring science. pH, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Is there a benefit to putting these on from what the science says? And again, we're gonna go look at it in the field. We did our own experiment, experiment, but what does the science say? So pH, and there is rumor that a pH of 4.0 is not too low for native warm season grasses. I mean, a lemon is lower than that, but 4.0 is pretty low pH. And so 4.0, no problem. Ah, okay, let's move on. Nitrogen, the science about the nitrogen in the plant in native warm season grasses says these plants are very efficient with the nitrogen that they have. They don't need much. Now that doesn't mean they're poor quality. We can get two pounds of average ga daily gain on a growing animal through the summertime. So really high quality forage, but they just don't need much nitrogen. They're very efficient with what they get. And part of the story there is actually some of the native warm season grasses have the ability like a legume to work with the bacteria to fix nitrogen. So that's Eastern gamma grass and switchgrass. Um, that's part of the story. Part of the story is these warm season grasses take that nitrogen back down into the root system during the winter. So this doesn't carry much nitrogen in the winter and the plant can use that nitrogen next year. And then part of it is the recycling story. What nitrogen is tied up in these leaves come winter and they're all brown, will be recycled by the microbes and available for other plants to take up. So science says sometimes there's a response to nitrogen fertilizer. Sometimes there's not a response. Some people put on 60 to 100 pounds of nitrogen fertilizer a year. And when, it's ha when you're hang, always when you're hang, I don't know of anybody that recommends not replacing what you're taking off, either with fertilizer or by bringing the manure back onto the field. Okay, that's nitrogen. Phosphorus. Mm. These grasses have a secret weapon when it comes to phosphorus. And that secret weapon is the mycorrhizal fungi. So first off, they're very efficient with phosphorus, just like they are nitrogen. But that mycorrhizal fungi is a fungus that comes and attaches to the roots of the grass. And basically the plant offers it some food. Hey, Mr. Fungus, if I give you some food, will you go out and get the phosphorus for me and bring it back to me? And so they strike up a deal. And that's what happens with these native warm season grasses. So phosphorus, not much response in the science literature to phosphorus fertility. What about potassium? Again, very efficient, not much response in the literature. And so that's all just boiling it up to say, in the science, some people put on a little bit of nitrogen. Um, some people don't, and this is on a not hay situation. Um, just, you know, out here, what, like the bison would have seen it, that, you know, there was no fertilizer buggy following the bison around. And that's what the science really shows us. I guess we could boil it down to that. So with that, let's go look at the field. And I want to give you a spoiler alert. There's going to be some of it that matters on the fertility and some of it doesn't. And so we're going to go look at what we saw and share that with you today. field of Caven Rock switchgrass here and I'm on the side with no fertilizer where we're at right now no fertilizer put on this now this is kind of a wet ditch it's never actually been hayed so we just kind of want to show you fertilized unfertilized without any hay being done so anyways this is the same 60 40 40 of fertilizer Caven Rock switchgrass probably about this high follow me over here they got specific directions telling me not to run. You guys can't keep up. I'm so fast. We're so fast on video. They yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I get blurry. I'm so fast. 
Uh, this kind of the same height. This is you know, Cave and Rock's Witchgrass that got fertilized. Um, so really, I can't tell any difference at all. No, it really looks, the color looks good on both. The leaf density looks good on both. I mean, being a wet ditch, wet places always have like the wetter spots, you know, where the grasses aren't growing as good. But it looks good. There might be a difference if we were to measure it. Don't know, but we, are, we haven't measured it and don't really see a difference. But this is what we expect. This plant is fixing nitrogen with the bacteria on the roots or is capable of it. I haven't dug one up to like measure this or anything, but it is capable of it. Whereas the big blue stem is not known to be capable of that. Um, so we're really not expecting uh, big, big differences because we're not removing those nutrients in that form of that hay bale. And these plants are so efficient with the nutrients that they have. And you was telling me earlier that not there's some studies showing that on switchgrass, it can fix its own nitrogen, but if you add the nitrogen, it won't necessarily fix more, it just kind of quits, is right. that right? My simplistic way of looking at it is, the switchgrass has to expend some energy to give the microbes, the bacteria that fix the nitrogen, sugars. So like they're making sugars up here in the leaves, and then they transport them downstairs, only a portion of them, and give them to that bacteria. But if there's plenty of nitrogen, why bother to share sugars, some of your to get food, more. to get more nitrogen? And so you just say, hey buddy, I don't need you, <laughs> and you cut that relationship off. <laughs> All right, let's go look at the gamma grass. Like it. <laughs> We're in eastern gamma grass field here. Uh, same 60-40-40 mix at the end of May, 1st of June, and we're right on the line. The camera's on the line. You can see a couple pink flags here and one closer to you there. That is the line, and we was looking. Maybe we could see a slight color difference, uh, but basically if I take the flags out, neither one of us could probably put them back where we originally had them. So that's kind of, we're not seeing a lot of effect. Yeah, be fun to measure it, but we didn't, and we didn't plan to, and we're probably not going to. But, you know, in reality, if you can't see the difference to some degree, how much difference is it making? I don't know. You can measure it on your place and see what see what happens because um, it might make a 20 percent difference. And maybe that's enough, you know, to actually be worth fertilizing for. But we, this is a little bit of a surprise to us of all the ones uh, that like this was the biggest surprise. And that's for two reasons. One, we're haying it. So we're moving nutrients. We do not bring the manure back. We're moving nutrients from here, and that is, you know, basically we're mining the soil. So we saw that with the big blue stem. Um, now, I would still recommend that if you're haying consistently, even like down here, and we need to get this decided and do some thinking about it and talking about it, but I would think we would still want to be fertilizing it when we're haying consistently, even though we're not seeing a big difference. Another little point I would throw in is we should probably adjust the pH make sure, do a soil test, know what the pH is because nutrients become more available when your pH is higher. The grass doesn't seem to care, but the nutrients and their interaction with the soil chemistry does care. Okay. I think like you said earlier though, the best thing you can do is some samples on your own farm. That's why we're doing these. If we can't find a difference, then let's not do it. Let's keep doing some testing and sampling as we go. But until we see a significant return, Let's not throw money at that anymore. Yep. So, yep. The other reason, so two reasons that we expected a difference. One was we're mining the soils here with the hay. The second reason that we expected a difference is because eastern gamma grass has been shown to react more to fertility, respond more to it, give you more yield. And like it will take on more nitrogen and do more with that growth than a big blue stem plant under the same circumstances. And so we really expected of all the things the gamma grass to really respond. And actually we saw more response in the big blue stem. Part of it could be too, like the seed heads out here, uh, gamma grass throws its seed heads up earlier. Should probably be cut a little earlier to optimize quality. Probably um, around the 1st of May. Yeah, depending on where you're at, north and south. Or sorry, not 1st of May, end of May. End of May. 1st of June. But, and that'll change as you move. If you're in Minnesota or Georgia, that changes significantly, but- We're right in the middle. We're right, right there you go. Um, so the gamma grass uh, seed heads are up and it's a little, makes it a little harder to see, like the big blue stems all just leaf. And it's a little easier to see that, I think, than it would be if there is a difference out here. Um, 
some of the other people that we know that do some gamma grass have really seen responses to it. So mm -hmm. it's a little curious, why aren't we getting that here? Or is it just so so that we can't see it right now? One thing on my end is just, just going through my mind as managing these fields is timing. Maybe I was a little late putting my fertilizer on for gamma grass compared to big blue, which matures slower. Uh, so some different things. We've had kind of a funny spring where it's been really, really cool and wet. So maybe that held it back. We'll see. The grass doesn't really, it needs the heat. It needs All the heat. The warm season. Oh, the like, warm season grasses, we've we've been really cool and it's turned off hot about the last five days. And I'd say we're growing two inches of blades a day yeah. right now. It's really impressive. Yeah. But when gamma grass was doing its growth earlier in the season, we weren't getting that we hot right. growth. And so if we would have had it earlier, and done the fertilizer experiment. I wonder what we would see well, then see because um, now it would be more vegetative. We would have cut the reproductive parts off, yep. mowed them down with our hay bale. Um, it, they wouldn't have been showing, so they wouldn't have been the stemmy right. thing that we have now. But then that regrowth would be ready to hay. I don't know if quite ready again, but in nearing ready to hay again, maybe we'd really see that difference then. I don't know. I don't know either. Mm -hmm.